Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at some internationalization inside of a Rails application. And we're going to be doing this using the Rails internationalization API, which is the i18n gem. And if you're wondering, the 18 is just because it's a uh, word that starts with I, ends with N, and has 18 letters between it. I wish I was making that up, but apparently that's the origin of it. Now, internationalization is one of those things you don't really think about until it, you know, is a requirement. It's not something that most people keep in the back of, your, of their heads, but it is something that you should consider. Uh, you're, of course, going to have people visiting your projects from across the world if you're exposing it to the internet. So you want people to have like a decent user experience by having the language translated into German or, or I don't know, Yeehaw Southern American or whatever, depending on where you're from. So we're just going to be covering that today. Let me see you into the application and I'll try to go fast because there's really not a lot here that I feel like I should cover. It's more just, you know, making sure you're aware this is an issue and some basic ways of how to use it. So we have the edge guide here. I'll have a link to this in the video description. It has a bunch of stuff on here that's, that's useful on some other stuff that you probably don't need to care about. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to generate a controller or a pages. We'll call it the home controller. We'll then go ahead and start our server, come into config, our routes.rb, change the get to a root and the slash to a hash Come over here, give you some spoilers about what we're going to cover and then clear this out. So I'm going to go ahead and come up to our app, our views, our pages and our homepage, hit control B to hide the side panel, F11 to full screen. And then in here, we're just going to try to test out the internationalization. I'm going to create a H3. In here, I'm gonna open up some Ruby code and in our Ruby code, I'm gonna do a T where I just pass in, I don't know, some words. We'll save that, refresh the page. Okay, now that we have that, uh, we can see that the words are appearing on the screen. That's pretty neat, but let's try something else. Let's just, I don't know, try something like just putting in the word hello. Now you can see, of course, if I put in the word hello, something weird happens, that's why I picked it. Uh, it's converting hello into hello world who knows where that's coming from. But what's interesting is if we try to do the same thing, maybe we do uh, colon hello, hit control S to save it, refresh the page, you'll see it's still doing that. But if I come in here and I change this to colon test, you'll see that it's just using the word test. It is capitalizing the word test, but still it's only using the word test. So where is this hello coming from that it is being converted into hello world? Well, this is coming from our config and our locales, our en.yaml. And if I scroll up, hit control B and F11, you can see in here, this is the internationalization file. Now this file teaches us a couple things, like we can uh, use the i18n.t or the t parentheses. Uh, the t is an alias that's useful in your views specifically, but in other places you might have to do i18n.t. Uh, the other thing it tells us is that some keywords we have to preface with uh, quotes. So instead of doing hello down here, you might have to do like quote for if you wanted it to be the word true. Uh, that said, this is where our hello and our hello world are coming from. Let me bump up the font size one more because this feels small. And in here is where we can do some other fun stuff. So maybe we want to change this. Let's do, we'll just call this another one. And then for this one, we'll just put, uh, I don't know, how are you today? We'll save that, come back to our home, and then we'll just, uh, let's actually do a control L and then a control V, and then let's replace this with another one. Save that, refresh, and there's our second string. Now, so far, this just seems like we're grabbing variables out of anywhere. We could be doing this from our controller as well, uh, but there's a couple ways that this can be helpful. So one example for this might be a, uh, a way to pass in, I don't know, like some additional data, maybe a, a variable, right? Well, let's say uh, another two, that's crazy. Um, let's do something like say my name and then we'll do my name is percent and then name inside of some braces. So this of course looks a little bit like a template and to the surprise of no one, it sort of is. If we come back to our home, I'll hit Control L, Control C, down arrow key and Control V to copy and paste that line. And then in here, what I'll do is I'll say, say my name. 
And I'll save this, I'll refresh, and you can see we don't get an error, but we are just getting the raw string. So to fix this, we have to actually pass in a second argument. So we can do a comma, and then we can just pass in a string for my name. And do you think this will work? Well, if we come over here and we refresh, you can see, well, it, it really didn't. And the reason is it doesn't know what the string is. So we actually have to pass in like whatever we called it. In this case, we called it name. So we have to pass in the name here. So I'm gonna save this, refresh, and now you can see it says, my name is Dean. If I get rid of this again, just to drive the point home, you can see that it just replaces it with the actual code. So we'll refresh and we'll leave it set to my name is Dean. Why is this all helpful? Well, in some cases you might have a uh, current time that you're trying to display. You might need to change that time depending on where you are in the world. You might want to change it from AM to PM. Uh, or to whatever people call it instead of AM and PM, in which case you might pass in like your current time. So we'll say current time. And then instead of doing Dean, you might pass in whatever the time is. And then you can do your formatting like this. Of course, right here, it's not happy because I did a big dum-dum. So uh, I changed it from name to current time. It doesn't know what to do with that. So I'm gonna change this to current time. And I'm gonna change this to be, uh, actually let's leave it as my name and I'll just say time is, the time is percent current time. Something like that. We'll grab the time, we'll put it in here. Uh, we'll just copy this, paste it, grab the time again, come in here and paste it. Save that and we'll put this back to just name and we'll just put this as Dean. There we go. So now I'll come over here, refresh. And you can see my name is Dean and the time is whatever the time currently is with the time.now command. Okay, so that works. Now, what else could we do? Because uh, you're not only gonna be using time or currencies, no one's really sitting here going, oh boy, I can convert from dollars to euros. Uh, but what we can do is we could, let's say, uh, hopefully GitHub Copilot will play nice. But we could do something like active record colon, and then hopefully it'll grab it. But if it doesn't, I already have it pre-built. Uh, let's just grab like a example here. So you don't need to copy this, of course, but uh, the basic idea is you might have a active record section for your post, your comments, and your users, and then you might have some errors associated with it. So if your model fails a validation, you can render one of these messages. So let's say you have a section like this and you wanna render out your uh, validation failed errors message. How do you do that? Well, the way we do this is we come into our homepage and in our, home, well, actually we save this and then we come into our homepage. And in our homepage, uh, I'm just gonna grab this one, I guess. You create a new line. This is gonna be your record underscore invalid. So this is gonna be your target. I wanna grab this line, so I'm gonna use the record invalid. Now the second argument here is gonna be something a little bit different. It's gonna be your scope. And your scope can take in an array. And for the array, we just wanna get to the record invalid. which Starts with active record. So we do colon active record, comma. I'll tab over a bit. We then grab the next one, which is our errors block, colon errors, hit enter. And we grab the messages block, colon messages. And then after this, what we can do is we can throw in the errors. Now I'm gonna leave the errors blank for right now. Come over here and refresh. You can see validation failed with percent errors, just like we had before, because we haven't passed in the errors. And you can imagine here, you might have a list of errors you need to pass in from your post model, where it might be something like errors. Uh, title must be at least 10 characters, something like that. And then your error gets translated over. Now, in this case, you could also pass in like a, uh, a custom you know, string for this, where this is also being translated to a different language. Uh, but here you get the idea. Your errors get passed in, the uh, record invalid throws, et cetera, et cetera. And you have all of this running through an EN file. Now we've covered this EN file a lot, but what actually happens if you wanna like change this to another language? In that case, you have a uh, locale, you come into your locale, you right click, you save something like de.yaml. 
in your de.yaml, you just copy or you mimic what you have in your en.yaml. Uh, you just convert it to uh, whatever language you want. So we'll do the same thing here, paste this in, save this. But instead of having en at the top, we'll change this to de. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can convert some of these if you would like to. Uh, in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the hello world to just be hello Havelt. I'll change the uh, another one to just be, uh, I don't know, like uh, we can just do test fall for test case. And then we can change the name to be, uh, oops, we can change the name to be, I don't know, hello and then whatever your name is. The rest of these I'm not gonna translate because it doesn't matter, you're not here to learn German. Certainly not for me. Uh, but then we can come into our application.rb and in here we can convert this to use a different set of available locales. So I'm gonna paste this in. Basically it is i18n dot uh, available locales equals percent i and then whatever you wanna use. In this case, I'm just adding in de for Deutsch or German as one of the options. Now that alone isn't going to uh, allow you to uh, convert the language. So just as a note, I have to restart the server because this is the application.rb file. Uh, and whenever you make a change in there, you have to restart your server. Now to actually get this to work, uh, ignoring the fact that I forgot to save there, uh, what we have to do is we have to change the default locale. And in here, I'm gonna change this to DE. And remember, when this uh, restarts, if I refresh right now, you'll see it doesn't change to German. But when this restarts, some of it's gonna be German, some of it's still gonna be English. So there you go. This is now in German, these three, uh, and the last two are not because I haven't changed it yet. This isn't Google Translate working. This isn't some other magic where it's translating everything. It's a manual translation. But this is really good because this is very easy to read if you're a third-party translator. You just get handed a YAML file, you come in here, you translate everything that's in the YAML file, and then you do your commit, and now you support a different language. Maybe you just did a, a Korean or Japanese or something. So this is really helpful, and being able to pass in variables makes it infinitely more so. And this is why in certain code bases, you'll see stuff like the i18n.t when you have an error message as opposed to just a regular string. That's also why you'll sometimes see a locales folder that has just a whole bunch of stuff in it. Yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I know this is a bit of a simpler tutorial, uh, but this did sort of address a lot of questions I had while I was learning it. So hopefully you learned something as well. Again, it feels like something you don't really think about until someone shows you that, it's, that it exists. So hopefully now you at least understand how to set up your internationalization and hopefully we can make the internet just a little bit more accessible. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.